So here we are, everybody. <clears throat> Congratulations to Faith Eichmann. If you're on the stream at some point, send me a messenger comment with uh, your contact information address and phone number, please. Would be great because we'll need to ship that cue to you. So, handshake from our players. We are off to the lag. Again, an extended race to 10. I will be here for the duration. It looks like uh, Christina knew that that lag from uh, wasn't going to make it, so she just stopped it and handed it over to Miss Kelly Fisher. So, we do have some cameras on the other side of the room now. They are going to be recording this match. You will see uh, the recording for this. I'm sure a link for it maybe in a few days. I am currently on mic for that. I have another microphone in my other pocket, which I cannot mute, by the way, but I do believe he can edit, so hopefully if I do something stupid or inappropriate, he can edit it out. But I do have a microphone on my jacket, so that, um, that recording will also be able to capture the commentary uh, for this match. So here we go. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Please share. And Kelly is off for the first break and our final set. So she's got a she's got a good break. It looks like the four ball got into the game here just a little bit, and is um, making it so the one can't go in that pocket on its own. I don't see a I don't see that it's clear there. I do believe though Kelly, uh, being the player that she is, is going to look at that combo if it doesn't clear. And she executed that beautifully. So she just had perfect speed on the cue ball to roll up uh, and to put the one ball in the same pocket. So Kelly always likes an angle like that for, for her shots. She's very comfortable with doing that. Oh, she's kind of close to that seven ball, so she's having to bridge a little long for that three. Still wasn't a problem came back, got about the same angle on the 5. Now the 6 is all the way down here, but I don't see it froze on the rail, so I'm not sure she really needs to do a whole lot to be able to make that 6 ball. I was right. Looks like it should go from anywhere. Um, based on the angle, though, she's not going to just slide right back up. I think she's going to go around for that 7. Probably put a little outside English on it, and she is. Yep, a lot of outside English. She wanted to make sure to avoid that side pocket. So she went just a tad bit too far. She shook her head there, um, but she's still okay. Oh goodness, hi everybody. Sorry, I'm trying to watch this game. I see I get got a bunch of comments here. I'll get back to them in just a second. And that's all she wrote for the first rack. When you break it that well, Kelly completes the break and run for a quick fire. What nothing we So yes, everybody, I did get my pizza. I feel much better. If anybody knows, I don't like to go that long without some food. So that was very necessary. I, I scarfed it down extremely quickly. Um, but I feel much better. So it looks like we just jumped up to 200 viewers. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing. Uh, we're, we got it out there. I uh, put it on my story in the WPBA page as well. So uh, thank you, Alan. I appreciate it so much. You should be able to, can somebody tell me if you can hear the break? Um, I have it turned up pretty good because we've decided to turn the music down in the arena almost completely. Um, so you should be able to hear everything going on in the room. I am pretty close to the table, so you might be able to just hear that break. If not, I'll turn it up just a little bit because the music's not going to get in the way. Uh, Debbie says yes, okay. So I'm going to be very quiet. I don't have to cover for the music, so um, 
and I've turned it up significantly so my whisper you should be able to hear. Christina chose to play safe there. She's trying to put the one ball all the way up on the top rail and she successfully hid that very well. There's a lot of traffic in the middle of the table and Kelly cannot directly see that ball. She's gonna have to kick at it. She's got, I think, yep, she's looking at a two rail kick to that one ball. And she missed it. She hit the nine right beside it. It was kind of hard to see when she's in the way, but um, she's left Christina ball in hand. Now there's the four, six, and two, as you can see, kind of stuck there in the center of the table. But she's got ball in hand, so she has a ton of options here. If she sets herself up, if the two goes in the corner pocket, and she sets herself up on the right side of the two, she can run into the six and four and break them up and still have a shot on the three. So that's an option that she might take. She's a very confident offensive player. Well, and a confident defensive player, so that being said. It looks like she's going to draw back for the three in the side. Maybe the four is uh, clear to go in somewhere. I'm not sure if she's going to impact those balls or not. She, she didn't. So the four must be a clear shot uh, in a pocket, or she's got a plan to use it as a lockup safe. I'm not sure. She's looking. I'm not sure. So at this moment, I'm not exactly going to speculate. That was a miscue. And I think she got lucky with that miscue. Uh, maybe not completely. Maybe that three rolled past the nine, but you could see it and hear it clear as day. So Christina, you can't see. She's pulled out something from her bag. I think she's going to do a little tip maintenance here. Um, and she is. She's poking her cue just a little bit. Of course, she stopped for a second while uh, Kelly shot that ball. Really good sportsmanship uh, with all the ladies here. Wow, you guys heard that miscue. I'm awesome. That's awesome. You guys can get the uh, get the volume out of the game. Kelly's deciding on where to put this ball because she just want to stay away from traffic. You put it in the side, you risk running into the 8. But I think she can go just in between the 7 and the 8, which she did. Just right in between them. Or 7 and 9, I'm sorry. So when Kelly shoots my direction, because I'm, I'm sitting lower than the camera view right now, um, I don't talk or move. So I'm yeah, trying to get back out there for the nine. She's definitely far enough. Looks like a good clear shot. All right. So I'm glad you guys can hear it. I'll probably do a little bit less talking. I don't have to cover for music. That's awesome. I think it's great that uh, you can hear the sound of the break because both of these young ladies have an awesome break.
cue ball got kicked a little there at the end, but it was right in the center of the table. She's got a shot. That one clearly goes into the corner pocket. The three is across table. It looks like on the high side of the side pocket just a little bit. She might roll up for that, um, or she might be fine just right where it's at. I think the four ball does go past the eight uh, in the corner pocket. It looks like it. She's, uh, she's looking at it right now. Uh, she made a little bit of face, so I'm not, I can't tell. i uh, quite sure if it goes there or not. So she just rolled across table for the three ball there. Um, she left herself just a tiny itty bitty angle. She should be able to punch over for the four, or she can roll up and put the four in the side if the eight is blocking the corner pocket, so... Okay, so she just punched it over. It must go past the eight. This is a simple, just a little bit of, just hit the side rail and bounce back out. It looks to me like you could stop this ball, stop the cue ball and just put the seven in the side. Or you can do it in Kelly Fisher fashion and slide it across the table and put the seven in the other side. Leave it to Kelly to completely prove me wrong. Kelly does have her own style of playing. She likes to shoot the way she wants to shoot and the speed she wants to shoot. But as you can all see, it works for her. And very successfully for that matter. She did take a moment. Kelly Fisher looking on a mission so far. Second break in row of the match. Three nothing lead. So I was saying she uh, did take a moment before this match to kind of prepare mentally for this. Um, try to get a nice little reset in. Obviously you can tell she's off to a great start. No, Carly, she does not hang about. We're waiting to see whether or not that one's going to peek out for a shot, and I'm pretty sure it did not. Keep the lights off the camera during the match, please. Thank you. Christina is trying, I think, to think about everything imaginable that she can do to gain control of the table again after possibly either, you know, p well, pushing out to various different locations possibly. And what uh, she's been watching, and this is the thing, she's come into the arena during very uh, specific matches of possible opponents that she has to play to watch their game so she can see kind of maybe what they're good at or what, uh, you know, what they really struggle at. So I would bet she's thinking about that right now. I don't really know much that Kelly struggles with, so um, she also might be thinking about whether she can offensively make this because it's really very difficult to push out to Kelly Fisher. And ladies and gentlemen, she is opening her case and getting out her jump cue. So she has chosen, I think, to make an offensive move here and try to see if she can not give up control of the table to Kelly.
You can hear a pin drop in this room, just so you know, with the music down. There are plenty of fans behind me, in front of me, beside me, um, and everybody is just holding completely still. And I am the only one talking. So this is when I pray that my voice is low enough that it's not disruptive to the players. So Christina changed her mind and she is pushing to the top rail. And in my opinion, if you leave Kelly Fisher an open shot, she's going to take it. And I am pretty sure she's going to take this. And she's looking at where she can put the two ball. <clears throat> she didn't take it. She played safe. Now that is a jump shot. If she can get that far. I don't know if she can jump over. She has probably two balls far too far away, but that one ball went really. Oh, she's got a. Does she have a hole in there? She might have just enough space in between those balls to squeak that cue ball through there. Nope, she went around. <gasps> oh, it was so close to the side. Mm, Kelly can see it. So everybody in, your, in the comments here, you're awful quiet. Let me know you can hear me say something. Is that what this is? Is this a golf commentator curse? Or a commentator voice? Hiya, thank you, Linda. Let me know you can hear me. I have never whispered like this in all my life. Ever, 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 ever. Awesome, thank you, Alan. So she hit that, that combo two, three perfectly. She made the three and had perfect speed on the two ball to launch it up towards the corner pocket and then uh, have it just come out a little bit to give her enough room to make the ball. Not sure what kind of angle, but that was what I was assuming. Kelly is very good at sliding over for balls. Was she just made a smirk? You missed that little look on her face because she uh, is on the rail. And she doesn't like to be on the rail, so. Which I don't like to be on the rail. Nobody likes to be on the rail. And in Kelly Fisher fashion, she says, okay, fine, I'll just go at it this way. Cue ball control is amazing. So, um, Jackie, I'm not going to disagree with your statement right there. She probably is out for her event. I never knew my voice could be soothing. My voice has never been soothing before. But yeah, very quickly, in a race to 10, Kelly is one game away from being halfway there. It is truly in Kelly Fisher fashion. Uh, Diamond, I do not know the payouts. Um, it's uh, Scott does have the checks sitting on the on his director's table. I do believe, I'm guessing, do not quote me, that uh, the winner gets a $10,000 check. Um, I'm not sure of the breakdown. I think fourth place gets 2000 and then kind of something in between first, second, and third.
Okay, here we are watching this one ball. Let's see what balls are going to get in the game. I think the eight ball did. I can't, I can't tell, but I think the eight ball's in the game. It is. Kelly is fast, and if she could see the ball, she'd already be down deciding what she's going to do. Or how she's going to get on the two ball, so she can't completely see it. I think she can see the left side of the ball. Now, the three balls down here in the corner pocket, if it was jawed more, there could be possibly a carom there, but I think it's too far away from the long rail to carom into that ball. So she just called a push to Christina. And she's just going to put that cue ball a little closer to the rail there on the seven, which I think gives um, Christina a larger view of the one, but not a complete view of the one. So Kelly is still standing, expecting Christina to give it back, and she did. So she must have a plan here um, on what, uh, what she wanted to do. It's a safety for sure. Well, geez, I could be wrong. She could be banking it for all I know. Oh my. Okay, so the three was far enough away from that pocket to try to hide the cue ball behind it. She almost got there. Um, Christina definitely has a shot on that one ball, though it is not a good one anywhere. So, um, I'm not sure. Kelly made a couple of balls on the break, so the traffic's just, just spread out. It's hard to play safe this way. Ah, the speed's not there. She left it. Yeah. So Kelly's got a clear shot of that one ball. I think she was... If she'd have hit a little harder, the one would have hit that long rail and gone out to the top rail. Hit behind the four, and it would have been a, a very good safety, but unfortunately the speed was off. Um, and she left an open shot here. So, the two is close enough to the pocket that I think she's, or the three, I mean, close enough to the pocket that she's fine a lot of different places on the table to make that three ball. So she's off a little bit on the two. She's going to slide it up to the top rail and back. There, so it goes to the top rail and back, kind of almost where she was. So for this shot, you don't want to hit the eight ball. You want to go around the eight ball one way or another. So you're either going to use inside English and go to the long rail to come behind it, um, or you can shoot it with outside or natural. I think if natural English, it would directly run right into the eight, so... Okay, so she tapped it. She did not want to. You saw that little wave that she gave. She didn't. That was that was the thing to avoid. You don't want to run into that traffic. And you can't control where Whitey's going to be, so... There's, um, just so you know, there's my professionalism coming out. I call it Whitey. The cue ball. Probably should call it the cue ball. I feel like I should be a whole another level of professional in this environment, considering uh, what this room is like for this finals match right now. So this is an in-between kind of shot. She's been looking at making it in a couple different places with the side, the corner, back cutting it. She is back cutting that is the <sighs> I'm having a moment of awe. I hate back cutting a ball. It's, it's so hard to see the angle on the ball on a back cut. She made that look easy and got the exact shape that she wanted for the eight ball. Now, she didn't get the shape on the nine she wanted. She made a face there and almost like grunted like, ugh. I guess that wasn't it right there, but uh, she is fine to make this nine ball. Perfect. I was sure Miss Kelly would have liked it, but she'll take it. Five nothing start for Kelly Fisher, and Christina's going to use her break. 
So we'll have a little five minute period here where they can kind of gather themselves. <coughs> so just for a second, Special I just... Special thanks uh, out, goes out to Angela Janik, who's running the stream for the WPBA. She's also a pro player. She's uh, all about promoting everything. And she's getting to talk to all kinds of people on the stream, and she's loving life. Everybody loves Angela. Not, every Not everybody loves Scott. Can't use one of those. Somebody's got to have a cue back there. Hang on. A yeah, well, we're, I'm, I'm just going to try to give you a chance to run a three ball rack. Do we have a cue back here? <laughs> I really should turn the camera on you and catch this. See, these are the details you got to figure out ahead of time. I wasn't sure how we would even have time to do this. So I know you're, you're and they can hear me talking. You're sitting right beside me. I'm leaving the mic on. So just so you know. So, um, if you say anything while I walk away, they catch what you say. <laughs> I'm warning some, uh, what, a fan actually behind me that the mic is on no matter what. So whatever they say is being oh, picked uh, up. So I'm going to say. Mike makes millions of dollars on uh, pool table equipment around. He's got no cue on him. <laughs> That's right. We appreciate Diamond's support. Well, it was a good idea. We thought well it lasted. Nobody has any cues left in the room. Everybody in the lights to get an experience of what it's like to be out here. Everybody thinks they can shoot pool until you have to stand in front of an audience. I would like to take a moment to thank the sponsors of this event, the Temple Radio Group, who did a lot of advertising for us. I'd also like to give a big shout out. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back after a short break. Uh, Christina took her break there, which uh, makes sense to me. Uh, Kelly is uh, so far dominating this match, uh, five to nothing, and not really giving Christina a whole lot of chances. So Christina just walked over to grab her jump cue. After the break, she does not have a clear shot on the one. However, the one is really close to the side pocket. And it's a very makeable jump shot. She made the ball. She put just a itty bit too much force into that jump shot and unfortunately launched the cue ball off the table there. So um, her aim was on point though. Yeah, 
and not having a shot after the break. Um, the two times that Christina, or actually three, I think, actually, that she's broke, she hasn't had a clear shot on the lowest numbered ball, so... I can tell you that playing Kelly Fisher, considering I played her the second day I was here, um, her break is is destructive when you're her opponent. So I'm going to have all the respect in the world for Kelly Fisher today. She, I am one of her biggest fans and not count how long it takes her to shoot a ball. She is quick fire for a reason. It takes her no time at all to run out of rack. And ladies and gentlemen, she is on point now. And I have a feeling that whoever made the comment about Kelly, she is out for revenge. We're officially say Kelly is locked in. Six nothing. Or Kelly Fisher. So, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't realize that I had the mayor of Fairfield, Iowa, sitting next to me. She's writing me a little note about something she would like me to say while we are um, we're being recorded and on stream. Connie Boyer. Did I say that right? So, everybody, I'm going to wait for this break real quick. Connie Boyer, the mayor of Fairfield, Iowa, would like to say hello and thanks for watching. She hopes to see everyone in person next time. So we're very grateful that um, Connie is here. Connie, I think, um, contributed, sponsored some um, some rooms for some of the players here, including Kelly Fisher. So we thank her very much for that, and I'm sure giving wonderful accommodations for Kelly during her stay. So Kelly, I think, was talking to herself and some of the fans there <laughs> that are sitting uh, to her right right now. We've got several behind, we've got several to the right, and several uh, sitting next to me. Everyone's being oh so quiet, because I'm sure if they said anything right now, you could probably hear them. Um, she is thinking about where to push out for this one ball. She's, uh, she's asking that cue ball to stop. She wanted to keep it on the rail there, I think. Um, Got some comments in the in the stream saying hi back to you, Connie. So there you go, and uh, some applause for Fairfield, Iowa, as well. So was this Invitational played last year? No, it has been roughly 22 months exactly since the WPA WPBA had a professional event. The last one was in Wisconsin in November of 2019. Or sorry. Yeah, 2019. Um, this event was played that year, I believe, but it's been two years since this event was played. However, two years ago, Christina was the champion of that event. So she tried to, which has a tough, 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 tough cut shot. She got very close. She undercut that ball, and that kind of came around that the pocket there and went back up to the center of the table. It looks like the five just slightly snuckered Kelly. However, I think the one absolutely goes past the six ball in the side pocket. If she's able to hold the cue ball there, she has a clear shot on the two. So she's going for the jump. Oh, Dawn, that's right. So, oh, wow. What a beautiful jump shot, beautiful jump shot. I actually didn't make it to that event in Canada, Don. Thank you for reminding me about that. There was an event in January of 2020. That was the last one. I didn't get to go to that event. 
So um, that was the Ashton Twins um, event in Canada in uh, the early 2020, and that was the last event before this one. Larry, thank you for waiting patiently. It's been, I'm sure, a tough year for everybody, not just us. But the WPA is, WPBA is back. Um, there are big plans for 2022, so make sure you're following our Facebook page, checking out the website. Um, you can expect to see updates on a, on a schedule for 2022 and a lot of great announcements uh, coming up. So, yeah, and thank you, Dawn. Dawn is like our historian for the WPBA. She knows, I think, everything about its history. Uh, I learned pretty much 90% of what I know about it from Dawn, so... So she kind of got off a little bit on the shape she normally likes for this, but she jumped out to get there. So I don't think, um, I don't think uh, anybody's uh, saying that's too shabby at all. She is running out the next rack again. She's on the eight. Speed, 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 speed. Brakes are good. Kelly looks like she's running racks off in the basement against the ghost. I'm telling you, she's just making everything on fire. Seven nothing. Yes, Marianne, too, yeah. It's hard to remember an event you weren't at. Y'all giving me such a hard time. My memory's terrible anyway. <laughs> That's because I'm old. That would be me. Not would be me. That is me. I am old. And Carly, who is um, one of the WPPA's biggest fans, and definitely Kelly Fisher's biggest fan, is calling out the WPBA title sponsors. So she's got a, a shout out to Simonis, Diamond Tables, Aramith Cloth, Kiwanis, and Fairfield Arts is specific for this event, and Darren Hamilton and Miss Connie beside me. So thank you so much to all the sponsors. Uh, I'm gonna quiet down for a second and see what Christine is gonna do with this rack. I think I, well, I have to mention that that cue ball was it right here. You really want that cue ball to stay in the center of the table. I was talking, so I don't know if it got kicked or if it just traveled to this um, corner pocket, but that's not where she wanted that cue ball to be. Yeah, can somebody verify that? Who won the Ashton Twins Classic in uh, January of 2020? Can somebody chime in and let me know? I can't remember. All right, so Christina's opted to play safe. Um, so regardless, that's a that's a, a good attempt. I don't think she got there in hiding that ball. I know she didn't because Kelly's down, uh, but she definitely um, left it. Okay, so that's not where Kelly wanted that to be. She was on track to hide that cue ball behind the five. It needed just a little bit more speed. Okay, so yes, confirmed. It was Allison Fisher, the other Fisher, that won the Ashton Twins Classic WPBA event uh, in Canada in January 2020. So here we go. Same thing again. We are in a full safety battle. She did get the cue ball all the way up to the top rail. It is pretty close to uh, touching the rail. She left the one ball, unfortunately, in my opinion. Um, it's a rail first shot. This is makeable, ladies and gentlemen, if you aim this right. Uh, the two ball is in the center of the table. In my opinion, you can make this one ball and shape the two. Okay, 
So Callie went for her jump cue. She has the rail um, to help bridge. She's taking off the extension that she has for the jump cue because she needs to get more height versus distance for this particular jump shot so she can clear the three ball. So I'm sorry that you can't see because of where the camera angle is, but I'll try and let you know. She made it. Fantastic jump shot. That was almost a complete full ball jump. Um, it does help to have the rail to bridge off of. Gives you a little bit more height so you can get that height over that full ball. And she executed it perfectly. That three ball, just so you know, did not touch a single bit of rail. You know that Kelly is definitely on her aim. Um, when you see a ball fall like that, it didn't even touch the side. Nothing. Nothing went directly straight in the pocket because I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I can see that angle perfectly. So she is straight on that four ball. She doesn't like it, but she's going to opt to not uh, you know, just to make the four ball and leave herself a little bit more difficult cut on the five. Uh, I think that's a good choice here. You can make that five and just go back and forth across the rail to get back onto the seven. You just simply have to make the five. Dead center of the pocket again. Perfect speed. Back and forth off the rail. She's got a perfect shot on the seven just to come slightly back for the eight ball in the corner pocket dead center of the pocket again. She's got tiny angle. I think she's going to slide right over to the right, just like that. And the nine ball in the corner pocket. Ladies and gentlemen, she is on fire. She makes a score eight nothing and then takes the rack. So for all of you out there, you're getting a show. Uh, once Kelly gets in her groove, it's pretty hard to get her out of it. I've seen her do 10 racks in a row playing the ghost ball in hand and not miss a single ball. If she has a clear shot after the break, everybody's in trouble. She's putting on a clinic, I agree. Uh, this one's funny. Hello, Zone. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Sammy, I don't disagree. Yeah, I would love to see this a tight match, but it's Kelly Fisher. She's just, this is her moment. She's going to dominate. No one's going to take it away from her. She made three balls on the break. I do believe that the two popped off of that top rail just enough to let her give her a shot to make it. Or she can run into the three, I'm not sure. Yeah, that was enough to make it. Okay, cue ball's fine. Based on where the three's at, I don't, it's kind of, I think, stuck a little bit on the rail. Looks like she's going to draw out of it? No, she's not. Maybe. Yeah, she's going to draw out of it. So she's leaving herself a good angle on the six ball. She's going to bring the cue ball back for the seven. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. <laughs> Carly, you just got my oh, oh, oh. That's the best I can give you, and it was spontaneous at that. Again, quick work. I know, 32 minutes. My match with Kelly Fisher, I think, lasted 26 minutes. Impressive, isn't it, folks? Kelly's just pumping on all cylinders right now. 9 nothing. Number two. 
too late. April Larson showed us that earlier today. You can battle back from any score, right, April? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> April did come back from a 5 0 deficit to win 8 5. It was very impressive. Eight straight racks in a row. Yes, Kathy, our match was like 26 minutes and a race to eight. So I did get two games out of that. I just want to say, um, <laughs> good on Angela. Thank you, Carly. So just so you know, everybody, please do not sign off of the stream uh, when this match is over. I'm going to turn the camera, and I'm going to um, kind of let everybody watch kind of our little award ceremony or whatever they do to present the trophy to uh, the winner. So um, if you want to stay tuned for all of that at the end, I am going to keep on stream until we are completely done. Oh, Frank, they did call it. Um, I can't remember the lady's name that won, but they did call the winner. And Frank, I'm sorry, it was not you. Um, Uh, Ingman, yeah, Faith, I think was her name, yes. So ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, it takes a lot to be down 9 to 0 in a match and get up and break and run. Obviously, Christina has got it in her. <coughs> Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Yeah, Carly, you have to get a ticket to win, you know. <laughs> the thing about this match is when it is an alternating break format and you give Kelly the break again, um, the odds are the odds are tough. If it was a winner break format, it'd be a totally different story. But our events have always been an alternating break format, so. did not make <laughs> did you guys please tell me you saw her facial expression and her like what happened there when she was walking back to her chair because for her not to make a ball on the break um yeah I know I'm shocked center of the pocket. Oh, 
Okay. Perfect shot on the one ball with the exception of the cue ball. Tried to slide over to the rail and back and it just hit the back side of the seven. Unfortunately, if it hit it head on, she'd be fine. Um, but because it hit the back side of the seven, she's tucked in about half of that seven ball view of the two. So she, okay, right there, she's eyeing, kicking at it. Um, the top rail and going back into it. If it was closer to the pocket, could go like a rail first kick shot and it would be uh, makeable. She looks at these jump shots and the thing about those is when the cue ball's out there in the center of the table and you don't have that rail to bridge off of and the ball is that close that you're trying to jump over, it's very difficult to do. I don't have it. I can't get a bridge out in the center of the table like that. I actually uh, for those of you that have seen me jump, make some accommodations for my jump shot because I don't have a working rotator cuff and I can't lift my arm high enough. I'm a handicapped ball player, but uh, I can jump a ball from just about anywhere, but I have to kind of do it a little bit quirky. So she's put an extension on. She's going to choose to do this kick shot here. Um, the odds of hitting this ball are extremely high, making it not so much. It's a little bit away from the pocket. Oh, I don't think... Uh, okay. So, we definitely hit the ball. Unfortunately, she's left Kelly a view, but I don't think it's makeable in either the side pocket or the corner pocket. I think she's going to have to either... She'll have to play safe on this somehow or another. I don't think the three's in the way. I just don't think she has a makeable pocket for it. Yeah, Marianne, did you see that face? That was pretty good, right? That's that Kelly face I was talking about. She can be very expressive. You kind of know what she's feeling and thinking when you're watching her. Sammy, you are um, not wrong. Christina is not tall. I actually, I watched Kelly Fisher on stream so much last year, running all of the WBBA virtual tournaments for um, for all the players that I was so intimidated by her ability to break and run 10 or 15 racks in a row against the ghost um, that I thought she was taller. <laughs> I don't stand but maybe an inch off of Kelly Fisher's height. She just uh, has an intimidating stature, I think. Because she's so impressive on a pool table, but... And I'm about 5'7". Okay, so the point there was to <coughs> leave the cue ball on the rail. <coughs> you want to try to eliminate the, the statistics of making a good clean stroke on that two ball. The eight ball is in the way of making it in the natural direction. So it would be a back cut in the opposite corner pocket if you were to try to be offensive and aggressive and make that ball. However, I think she's eyeing a safety. And in my opinion, I think you can hide that cue ball um, easily behind the four or behind the eight or behind the nine. There's lots of options here. Okay, so she's chose behind the four. And it definitely was a, a very well executed shot considering where she was coming from there. It would have been nice to tuck that cue ball up against that four in real. Uh, if she had done that, she would have limited Kelly's options. Oh, Carly, what did I say? What did I say that your illusion is shattered? What happened? Tell me. What did I say? I don't remember. <laughs> she 
She tried a bank. She made it to the other one. Ladies and gentlemen, that happens. If you're going to miss it just a little bit, that's the way to miss it a little bit. Oh, short. <laughs> Sorry, Carly. <laughs> um, Kelly is not short. She's taller than me. I just thought she was like six foot one or something like that. She's probably five eight, I would guess. She's definitely not short. I am significantly taller than Christina and Jennifer Beretta, though. Um, so Kelly and I are about the same height. It's in, it's in, it's in, it's in, it's in, but the cue ball, wow. So she was watching it, worried about it um, going into that side pocket, but it just missed it. Kelly is taking a couple seconds longer on every shot. You can tell this is, she's on the hill. She wants to be sure. I want to cry. Kelly hates that. She hates it about more than anything else that there is in pool. She does not want to win that way. She does not ever, 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 ever want to win that way. But we have to admit, ladies and gentlemen, that it happened. She was supposed to make that five ball anyway. She's on the hill 9-1, so I'm not going to take anything away from her whatsoever, but she's, she doesn't ever like to do that. Regardless, the rest of the rack, where she intended it to be. Place there, that was really fantastic for us all. What a great place you've got! So good luck with that. 
Um, the sponsor of Diamond Brothers, Arabic Balls, and Simone's Cloth, along with many of the Otuma uh, Radio and all the other sponsors I can, you know, go on and on. I will keep you all too long before I bore you to death. So, thank you very much, and thanks to um, you know my family for understanding. And when you travel, I love to do what I love to do. It's hard when you're traveling all around the world and away from home. So. But we COVID, we've all, we've all been stuck, haven't we? So it's really nice to be away. So I really appreciate it. Thanks very much to everybody. Christine is a fantastic player, um, a true champion. She's beat me many times. You know, I feel like the um, the old old woman here. I've got back to back young ones at me, and uh, you know they're great players and going to be champions of the future. So you know, watch out for them. I'm sure they'll, you'll see them many, many more times when I. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks to everybody, and we can look forward to all for coming back next year. Um, I hope to see you all again real soon.